something. Um, listen, we know Tom Brady can take hard coaching. He was with Belichick for 20 years. Did Belichick is a hard coach. He's a, he coaches hard. But I saw that Bruce Arians, 70-year-old Bruce Arians, once again went public, not even as the head coach now, criticizing Tom Brady. He said, I don't think it was fair to Byron Leftwich. Nobody is going to say Brady was playing bad, but he was playing bad. We also had growing pains of a young offensive front weren't running well. There comes a time as a play caller when you're losing yards, running the ball, and you say, forget this, I'm putting the ball in Tom's hands. First of all, Brady was playing poorly, and everybody was saying it. Every show was saying it. So let's not create a straw man argument. Brady was getting hammered. He was going through uh, some personal difficulties. So there's that. The second thing is, I don't want to over-dramatize this because Brady can be coached hard. Don't you think, though, he's getting a little tired of being criticized by Arians publicly? If I'm going to criticize Aaron Rodgers for too often airing out his grievances to the media, really, people, you don't have to put every meal on Twitter. Some things are okay if they're just, you know, between you and you. Um, I think Tom's tired of it. I think he's agitated. Remember, Arians was in Tampa with all this talent before Tom. He was seven and nine. And then Tom and that leadership singularly changed everything. All they did was go get a really good right tackle, Gronk, and won the Super Bowl. (laughs) That was about Tom. And so I think I'd scale back on the public criticism of Brady, who's gone through the worst and most difficult time of his adult life. And I will say it again with conviction. You know who wouldn't criticize Tom Brady publicly? Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch wouldn't. Oh, they would be very happy to have Tom Brady. Because they don't have a Super Bowl, and they want a Super Bowl, and they have a roster ready for a Super Bowl, and they don't know what Trey Lance is. And they like Garoppolo, but have privately concerns and then publicly about his health. I can assure you, Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch would not criticize Tom Brady. I am not making any predictions. But Tom, we have record now of Tom preparing to do things, Miami Dolphins situation, before he does things. I've had that, by the way, sourced. That that puppy was done. He was going to Miami. Just keep your eye on that Niner situation. Just keep your eye on it. Just another Bruce Arians jab at Tom Brady. I think he's getting tired of it, especially this year. Rough year. Time for new tires. Trust the experts at TireRack.com. Joel Klatt, top of next hour. Don't forget Mark Schlereth next. He's got the Broncos Raiders game. A couple of tire fires speaking of TireRack.com. I feel bad for Mark. They've been crushing it at TireRack.com for over 40 years. They have their easy-to-use tire decision guide. A couple of questions. You'll get a personalized tire recommend. Because he's not as athletically gifted for years and years, we heard, well, he's a system quarterback. Well, I don't know. Took the system to Tampa. They've done pretty well. Mahomes is so John Elway, Dan Marino gifted that nobody thinks it's part of the system. I'll get to that in a second. But I was looking at some numbers. Patrick Mahomes has thrown four or more passing touchdowns in 22% of his games. (laughs) That's the highest in NFL history. And I found that through the years, there are two types of people in business. One, those who are jealous of other people's success. And then the second group of people who say, how did you do that? That's amazing. What was your secret? They're curious. Um, something, when you look at Patrick Mahomes, let's be the second person. Let's ask why and how. Patrick Mahomes was available to every NFL team. He went 10th, so nine teams passed on him. But Kansas City was going to draft 27th. And all they had to give up was an average first-round pick and an average third-round pick because the Chiefs were good, and those would be picks middle, bottom of the round, to move up to 10 and draft him. He was available for the entire league. Mm -hmm. 
How? Why? What did they see? Again, let's be the second successful person. Let's not be jealous of Kansas City. Let's ask. How the hell did they do it? What did they see? Two things that need to be said. Number one is winning as a college quarterback, fans care about that. Scouts don't. Josh Allen didn't win. Patrick Mahomes had a losing college record. Ohio State quarterbacks all win. None have ever been great in pro football. (laughs) Winning in college doesn't mean squat. They're looking for traits and talent. So get over that. If you're a team and you hear somebody say, Mitch Trubisky's a winner. Ah, shut up. Does he have arm talent? Who cares if he's a winner? Buckeye quarterbacks, Gator quarterbacks, Tebow was a winner. Does that mean nothing? Well, a little something, but not much. So that's the first thing to get over. Most Heisman quarterbacks, by the way, stink in the NFL. Tennessee volunteers were better when Peyton Manning left. They were. He left. They won a title with T. Martin. Who you think's better, Peyton Manning or T. Martin? But the second thing, and it's really, really important, and it does matter, is that some of Mahomes' success, a chunk of it more than you think, is where he landed. Look at Mac Jones. He made the playoffs, and he is athletically limited. And then this year, in what can only be described as odd, the Patriots decided that (laughs) who needs an offensive coordinator? Mac Jones has regressed badly. As gifted as Josh Allen is, Brian Dayball left. He's reverting back to Wyoming in year one in the NFL, Josh Allen. If you look at the quarterbacks right now, young quarterbacks in this league, Tua is suddenly flourishing an offensive coach. Mahomes, Andy Reid, Sat behind Alex Smith. Great GM stability. Justin Fields, by the way, I had my concerns. He's got very little to work with, but he appears to have a terrific offensive coordinator. And it looks like Matt Eberflus is the dude. Trevor Lawrence, whoo, that was choppy. Then he got a then he got a Super Bowl winning head coach. You watched him lately? Trevor Lawrence is good. Joe Burrow, offensive head coach. Got him, Jamar Chase. Is that we can all learn something, and I think in most instances, most people know this. Don't worry about winning college quarterbacks. If it was that easy, you'd just draft the top six schools every year. Just just, just, just draft a Clemson quarterback followed by Ohio State, draft a Georgia quarterback. How many great Georgia quarterbacks have there been? Fran Tarkington was good, Matt Stafford. Not not many of them. The one they have now is not even an NFL quarterback. Good college quarterback. And the second thing is, and we know this, right, to be true, especially for young people, what's your support system? This is really hard. In the NFL, the better you are, the worse your draft picks, the opposite of college. And Mahomes has had a great coach, a great mentor in Alex Smith, a great GM, stability, They get him weapons. I'm not saying he wouldn't be fascinating and talented, but when you look at the one young quarterback we know is great and we have questions, isn't it Justin Herbert? We're like, is this the right coach? We don't doubt the talent. So instead of being jealous, sometimes ask the question if you see somebody crushing, a man or a woman. What did you see? How did you do that? Those people usually have extended success over a lifetime. Way to go, Chiefs. All right. Uh, Joel Klatt in 45 minutes from now. I am going to be all over him. I hope he watched my opening rant because I thought it had some gems about LSU and USC. It is, uh, it feels so good. You know, I said this. I'm going to be very different.